54-man unit. That's where we are. Unit down for each other. Go, go, go! Hi everybody and welcome into the first show of the year here from Glendora, California. The Lakers falling in double overtime to Azusa Pacific 26-23. We'll look back on some of the big plays of the game. Of course you'll hear from coaches and players. Going to give you a player profile this week from Peyton McCallum. And we'll also look back at a special feature on our trip to Pasadena. It's all ahead as GVSU Football Weekly gets started after this. drive for the Cougars the Lakers force a punt as David Talley sacks Nick Owens for an 11 yard loss as the Lakers have the ball a second and 10 Kirk Spencer with an 11 yard rush for a Laker first down the Laker offense continues with a strong passing attack as Heath Parling connects with Mike Rattay good for 13 yards on this catch Grand Valley sophomore kicker Joel Skipper connecting on this 40 yard field goal attempt his career long and the Lakers had a three nothing lead on the next possession for the Cougars, Marquez Goldman would come up with this interception to help set the Lakers up for another scoring opportunity. Here on third and 17, Matt Judon would come off the edge and sack Nick Owens, forcing a fumble that senior defensive lineman Isaiah Dunning would recover. As the Lakers tried to answer Azusa Pacific's lead, Kirk Spencer would rattle off this eight yard run to keep the drive alive. Keith Parling would look deep down the right sideline and find Jamie Potts. This one for 32 yards as the Lakers got deep inside Cougar territory. On the very next play, Heath Parling would connect with senior Keontre Miskell. A 23-yard strike. It's the 70th passing touchdown of Parling's career. And with the extra point, the Lakers had a 10-7 lead.
With the Lakers trailing 13 10 and needing a turnover, Brad Horling would pick off this pass and return it 17 yards. The Laker drive would result in points as Joel Skipper would connect on his second 40 yard field goal of the night. Newcomer Matt Williams would get his first punt return as a Laker, good for 45 yards down to the 27 yard line of Azusa Pacific. As the overtime session began, Azusa Pacific scored to make it 20 to 13. Grand Valley on offense as Heath Parling would connect on a bubble screen with Jamie Potts. Now the Lakers were facing a third and 10 as Heath Parling found Daryl Pitts for 12 yards down to the one of the Cougars. Mike Rite would take the handoff and rumble in from one yard out and with the skipper extra point the Lakers had tied it at 20 as we went to double overtime. Lakers would get the ball first in the second overtime period. Joel Skipper here from 37 yards away and Grand Valley led 23-20. As a senior in high school, didn't really know what to expect, um, but when I knew when I stepped in Grand Valley's doors, the atmosphere and just the level of competition and intensity here was unmatched across the board to other schools I visited. Before coming to Grand Valley, uh, I used to see Division II teams play on ESPN, and I said, I want to do that. Knowing that I know the following year I'll be playing in the national championship game. He's at the 50, he's at the 40, he's at the 30, he's at the 20, 10, 5, and it's a touchdown, Lakers! Of course, I'm playing at a broader scale right now in the NFL, but just the pure passion that the fans came out into lovers with every day is, is unparalleled. Uh, there's really an acceptance that you're part of a club, you know, being a part of this team, and you're part of it for life. It's not a four-year thing. You're you're a Laker for life. People around the nation know when you hear Grand Valley State, you usually think of they're playing for a national championship or they're in the playoffs making a deep run or winning their league even. So a lot of guys play college ball, you know, Division One, and never get to play for a national title. Here you get to play for a national title. You're always going to compete for it here at Grand Valley. When I came here, they, they explained it as a big school with a small school feel, and that's exactly how it felt to me. Obviously, the school's grown tremendously in the last 10 years, but you still have the small town feel, and everyone's a family, just a nice community. It's a great location. Grand Rapids, 20 minutes away. The beach, 20 minutes away. It's not overly crowded, but at the same time, there's enough people where you're getting that life experience of of being around a lot of different kinds of people. Grand Valley, I've always known it was a prestigious school. It really is the best education. You're gonna get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time. The professors here are amazing. I would say you're gonna get A, a great education. B, you're gonna have a great experience playing football. And it's gonna lead to a lot more success than just playing football. It's gonna lead in your professional career, prepare you for the real world, because there is life after football. And that's something you have to prepare for, and they do a tremendous job of doing that. I mean, you definitely want to be somewhere where you feel like you can contribute to something that's of a greater cause, and Grand Valley is that. You can see by looking around here on the walls of the great players that have came through here and, you know, the Directors' Cups and multinational championships that not only football but other sports have accumulated. But I actually felt good that I came to a place that actually wanted me for who I was. They just wanted me as an athlete, and they, they felt that they can sculpt me and mold me into the player that I am now. Here, it's the best Division II school in, in the country for football. Every day in practice was a grind. The competition level is high. The people that they bring into this program are some of the best athletes that can, can be recruited around here. So if you're one of those lucky guys that gets a chance to come here, I take full advantage of it. The coaches were phenomenal, I think. You in the moment, you know, you think coaches are hard on you, this and that, but they really taught you some life skill lessons. The coaches here are really great. They're going to teach you discipline. You know, you're going to you're not even going to become a better football player. You're going to become a better man, a better student. I learned the true value of hard work, uh, discipline, how, how to be accountable as a human being. That's kind of what uh, geared me and, and tailored my mindset for the NFL. And I believe that's why I've made it this, this far in my career. I'm uh, going to year six, and that's all because of the things I was instilled and learned here at Grand Valley State. These guys I played with, they're still my, my best friends, the coaches, they're still my mentors. Ever since I've been gone, they've been extremely supportive. I can call and talk to these guys anytime. It's not just everybody moving on after you're done playing here. You stay in touch with everybody, coaches and players alike. 
I come back every off season. I train here. I train in the indoor facility, and they're great to me there. At the end of the day, it was, it was a family here. It was a family atmosphere. It was a brotherhood. You could talk to any coach. They would respond to you. And then when it's time to go play, it's just that much easier to go out there and play for the man next to you, your coach next to you, because we're just all-inclusive, all brotherhood here. The family atmosphere, the chance to win a national championship, the fun that you have here, it's truly something that any college student would want to be a part of. And a bonus is being a Grand Valley football player where the program and the tradition here is so unbelievable. There's nothing like playing for Grand Valley. There's so much pride here. You have the best coaching staff. You have the best facilities of Division II and, you know, the best education you can get. I worked this hard to get to this level. I never forgot where I came from, and Grand Valley was uh, the right place for me and it gave me this push to get to the NFL and to be a Dallas Cowboy now. Grand Valley is prone to do bigger and better things, and this is only the beginning. For about the past seven months, Ellie's been running really high fevers, anywhere from 101 to 105. I really appreciated that when Ellie was going through a lot of her health problems that Dr. Dutler called me personally. I think it's important for parents to know that we really care about these kids just as we would care for our own children. Access to health is really an important part of being a medical home in primary care. So we do allow our patients to uh, make same day appointments whenever possible. They can email me or they can call. Ellie really likes going to see Dr. Dutler. Doctor. Doctor. If you sign up for DirecTV's latest deal, prepare to be blindsided. Because they'll double your rate before you know it. And you'll find you're locked into a two-year contract that can cost you over 3,000 bucks. That's why the smart choice is Xfinity. You can see all the best action in football all season long. With no surprises, don't get blindsided by DirecTV. Call 1-800-XFINITY today. And welcome back to GVSU Football Weekly. I'm Steve Lloyd-Jones. Tuesday night, the Lakers headed west out here to beautiful California to take on Azusa Pacific. Now on Wednesday, they took a stadium tour of the Rose Bowl, as you can see behind me. Let's take a closer look at this iconic stadium. Thank you for coming to the world famous Rose Bowl. This is the uh, classic granddaddy of them all. One of the things we always try to do with our Grand Valley teams is take them somewhere else uh, other than just going to play the games because it is a, their education and uh, you know a lot of these uh, student athletes will never get to experience this again and, and have never been to this part of the country before. So we're really glad to uh, bring them here and uh, take them to places uh, like this whenever we play on the road. What you learn on the field is remarkable. You, you learn about character. And in many regards, where you can hear these names, see these images, and these young men coming here today will actually reinforce the notion that they have the character within themselves and they will be showing that to the world, really, when they're out on the field. And even more importantly, when they leave the intercollegiate world and go out into their professions and into their careers to show that character come through not time and again. These guys want to know the Grand Valley fight song, so we're going to give them the Grand Valley fight song before we go, led by our famous leader, Charles Hill. You guys ready? Oh, yeah. All right, let's go. One, one, two, three, four. What a Grand Valley victory as the Lakers we have pride. Our team will lead us on to a white world. Victory. 
So the players were able to get a taste of the rich history and tradition of college football here at the Rose Bowl Stadium. Great experience for all of us. And stay tuned. Coming up next, we'll have a closer look at one of the senior players for Grand Valley, a player profile straight ahead as GVSU Football Weekly continues. something every single day at Grand Valley State University about who you are and who you can become about where you've been and where you're going about your goals and how to accomplish them at the end of the day you know what you want from life find it within yourself find it within Grand Valley State University for about the past seven months, Ellie's been running really high fevers, anywhere from 101 to 105. I really appreciated that when Ellie was going through a lot of her health problems that Dr. Dutler called me personally. I think it's important for parents to know that we really care about these kids just as we would care for our own children. Access to health is really an important part of being a medical home in primary care. So we do allow our patients to uh, make same day appointments whenever possible. They can email me, or they can call. Ellie really likes going to see Dr. Dutler. Doctor. Doctor. Welcome back to GVSU Football Weekly, presented by Xfinity. I'm Steve Lloyd-Jones. Grand Valley falling in double overtime to Azusa Pacific, 26-23 the final score. Now let's hear from head coach Matt Mitchell. Well, I thought our defensive line and our uh, inside linebackers were playing well. You know, when they tried to run stuff east to west, we were running it down. We are doing a pretty good job for the most part of stuff in the run. And then uh, I thought we had a good third down package. You know, when they got back third down, we get a lot of pressure on the quarterback. And um, so, you know, we, we, we had a good game plan heading in. I thought our kids did a good job in the first half, um, you know, defensively executing that and really slowing down their offense. Well, that's probably the most frustrating thing with the first half is you walk off the field realizing that there's a lot of, you know, possessions that you had that started midfield, if not inside midfield. A lot of times you can get anything out of them, and uh, you can't do that. I mean, you got to, you know, we had great field position the whole first quarter, and uh, to look up on the scoreboard and not see that we had a bigger advantage was disappointing. So. Um, you know, turnovers, uh, three and outs, those type of things don't allow you to take advantage of, you know, what you get in terms of field position. Well, I was big, you know, heading into halftime. We had a sudden change opportunity off of a, you know, sack fumble that they scored on us to make it 7-3, and they kind of had some momentum. We came back down the field, and Keith Partling hooks up for Keontae Miskell for, you know, obviously the touchdown. So we had a locker room 10-7. And, um, you know, talk about some of the mistakes we made and things like that. Knew we were getting the ball to start the second half. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's disappointing that you come out to start the, you know, the second half and um, you get kickoff return team, get you some decent field position, you go three and out. You know, we didn't, didn't generate any offense, so now you're back out there. You know, you had kind of a, uh, on their, their touchdown drive, there was a third down, a really tipped play on our sideline. You know, we got to come up with that ball, you know, and um, didn't. So they go back up and go down. And, uh, you know, that was, uh, I think both of their touchdowns, the first two touchdowns they got came off turnovers, you know, so our defense got to do a better job in those sudden change situations. 
Yeah, I mean, that was a tough, tough situation because you get this huge special teams play to get you down there. And we were going to be kind of conservative with our play calls, you know, and so we were, you know, we're doing a little bit better. We got a couple first downs running it, then we get a holding penalty. And uh, Joel had done a great job making two field goals, you know, that were, uh, you know, 20 yards out. I don't know the distance on them, but really two really, yeah, career long field goals. Line him up and he just pushes one, you know, to the left. And that was, uh, I was pretty, you know, pivotal at that point. We could have taken a three-point lead with less than four minutes to go in the game, and the way our defense is playing, and they got to go, you know, the distance of the field. Uh, I would feel good about that. So I was a big, big miss field goal at that opportunity uh, that could have given us the lead. I think he got stronger, and I, you know, I think our guys got tired. You know, when um, Hogan was out early, so we were a little bit, you know, thinner up front uh, with some of our guys. And then, uh, you know, there's a couple times I wish I would have brought a little bit more pressure, done a couple things, you know, uh, down towards the end of the game to try to keep them off balance, but. I mean, he, he got stronger, and we were, we were struggling in the fourth quarter with the volume of plays they were running, you know, really tackle him. And I think they had, you know, 59 plays. He carried the ball 40 of the 59 plays. I mean, that's, he's obviously, you know, rolling about 67% of their offense, and you got to give credit to him. I mean, he's a really – he's an All-American type back, and uh, we struggled in the fourth quarter in overtime getting him stopped. Things stopped. Well, we got to clean up a lot of stuff. You know, we work on ball security every day. got to put more energy and focus on it, obviously. It was not good enough uh, week one. we got to um, take a look at, you know, everything – uh, we're doing offense and defense and special teams and try to put our players in the best position to win and get back because we don't have any time to really uh, drown our sorrows. we got a tough Ohio Dominican school coming in. But our kids, um, they're resilient. We were in this position last year a little bit, and they, they got back on tape and fought. You know, and I'm, I'm sure this was a tough loss for us on the road. So we've got to get home, get healed up, rest up, get on the tape, start getting to work on Ohio Dominican. Hey John, check it out. Whoa. Yeah, I was testing to see if we really can turn any device in your house into a TV, and the tablet worked just fine, but I wanted to see if the phone would work as well. So I shrunk Sharon. Every channel's live just like on TV, but it's my phone. It's genius. Shh. I'm watching TV. Tiny Sharon's mean. I'm right here. Watch any channel live on any device around your home. The X1 Entertainment Operating System, only from Xfinity. And welcome back to GVSU Football Weekly. I'm Steve Lloyd-Jones. Our player profile this week is on senior offensive lineman Peyton McCallum. This is a guy who knows an awful lot about injuries and adversity in his career, but he's ready for his senior season. Oh man, I'm telling you, you get here when you're a freshman and it just happens so fast. All the, you know, the games, you go to the games, but basically it just happens. You get here, California, my senior year, pretty excited about it but it really happened so fast. As we move into his senior year he's certainly providing leadership. He was unable in the offseason to participate in a lot of our activities because of his injury which really I think helped him and helped our young guys because he basically became another assistant offensive line coach for me and could really help our young guys in terms of them understanding the position. Oh man all my best friends are here. It's a I mean it's bigger than myself. The whole program everyone I reach out to it's like a big family, you know? It's just a huge camaraderie. Everything that I do is representative of Grand Valley and everything that encompasses, you know, all of this is something that I've been privileged to be a part of. Yeah, I tell you, the thing that Peyton really does within our offensive line, he really brings that true, hard-nosed, gritty offensive line demeanor to him. You know, one of his best strengths as a player in our offensive line is he's not afraid to play nasty, physical football in there, in the, you know, in the interior line for 60 minutes. You know, whatever we ask of him, he does full speed and really provides that type of you know, demeanor that you need to have in the offensive line. So I think in fall camp, with him back out there, really has shown some of his young guys what it means to be kind of a nasty you know, interior offensive line here at Grand Valley. 
Um, everything. I mean, everything is a, it's a life lesson. Everything we do, from meetings, diligence, you know, you learn respect, you learn character. It's all in part of the game, and you got to translate that to the game, but in real life, you take all these lessons you learn, and, you know, you got to apply it to your career, whatever you're going to get into. So, Senior wide receiver Keontre Miskell had a career night of five catches for 75 yards and one receiving touchdown. He's the subject of this week's lightning round. Steven Eliezer. First car, uh, 300 Chrysler C. Do you have any celebrity crush? Ariana Grande. Favorite uh, Cream of wheat. <laughs> Sleep in. What can you always hear? Embrace the process. What is the necessary? Hershey Jackson Fallen. Uh, David Talley. Steven Oliva. <laughs> Matt Judai. Jamie Foxx. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, every day in the family. Well, that'll do it for our coverage here from Glendora, California, as the Lakers fall in double overtime, 26-23. Now, next week is the home opener against Ohio Dominican. I hope to see you there and be sure to wear black. Go Lakers! About the past seven months, Ellie's been running really high fevers, anywhere from 101 to 105. I really appreciated that when Ellie was going through a lot of her health problems that Dr. Dutler called me personally. I think it's important for parents to know that we really care about these kids just as we would care for our own children. Access to health is really an important part of being a medical home in primary care. So we do allow our patients to uh, make same day appointments whenever possible. They can email me or they can call. Ellie really likes going to see Dr. Dutler. Doctor. Doctor. If you sign up for DirecTV's latest deal, prepare to be blindsided. Because they'll double your rate before you know it. And you'll find you're locked into a two-year contract that could cost you over 3,000 bucks. That's why the smart choice is Xfinity. You can see all the best action in football all season long. With no surprises, don't get blindsided by DirecTV. Call 1-800-XFINITY today. something every single day at Grand Valley State University about who you are and who you can become about where you've been and where you're going about your goals and how to accomplish them at the end of the day you know what you want from life find it within yourself find it within Grand Valley State University <laughs>